Well, hello, and welcome to another CAD tutorial video. Today, we're going to focus in on Inventor, and we're going to be creating a string that functions on a pulley. Now, I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of made a few of these parts ahead of time. I've made the weight and this little tiny hook up here in this pulley. Our main job today is to keep this video relatively short. Uh, and focus on the main functionality of the string or the rope that's going to move and function in here, um, which is really the challenge of this, this exercise here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start up a new assembly file. And I'm going to go ahead and place those three parts that I've already made in there. Okay, so here's the weight, our pulley, and our little hook. Okay, so it all comes down to how we constrain this. It kind of always comes down to that. Um, while I'm getting myself situated here, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel for more exciting videos like this and a variety of CAD software. And uh, if you have an idea for our next video, please leave it in the comments. Okay, so let's get back to this. And we're going to begin by constraining our pulley. So the first thing I'm going to do with that is we'll do a central axis to the origin. Okay. And then I'm going to do, I did this through extrusion mid-plane. So I'm just going to use that plane to one of the assembly planes. Hmm. I must need to flip it. There we go. Okay. So at this time, our pulley is fully constrained with one degree of freedom in rotation. So it'll spin freely up here. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, I'm going to move the hook off. And now we'll work on our weight over here. Now the weight, what I'm going to have to do is take an assembly plane like this one. And I'm going to offset it one inch. One inch is the uh, groove. Let me make sure of that. Nope, it's half an inch. So let's edit that. Uh, my pulley diameter is one where the rope will be inserted in. All right, so with that, we are going to focus in on the weight and the hook. Okay, so let's go grab the hook. I got a little flat spot on my weight and my hook, so I'm gonna take the flat spot and constrain it to the flat spot on my weight. Okay. I'm then going to get these things lined up. So my hook is sliding, and I want that to not have any degrees of freedom. I want these two pieces to be welded when it's all said and done. So let's find our hook and find the planes. So we'll take that plane, which runs through the center of the hook, and we'll run it through the center of the weight. Let's make sure it's not an optical illusion. Okay. There we go. Okay, and then one more the opposite direction. Uh, 
All right, so these two pieces should move together as one unit. So that's perfect. Okay, the next thing I want to do is get this in line with this plane that we offset, this work plane in the assembly. So let's go ahead and constrain on our hook, that one there, to this plane. Okay, and then let's take our hook, the plane that runs through the middle of it, and constrain that with our assembly plane that runs through the pulley. There we go. So now our weight and our hook should translate up and down. It's just how we want it. All right, this work plane, I can go ahead and turn the visibility of that off. And then I'm going to come back to my assembly. Since we constrained the pulley to the assembly, I'm going to take that and make that visible. And then I'm going to add a constraint between that piece right there. top of the hook to this and I'm going to set it to a distance of five. Okay, so right now we're five inches or five units from this little point here to this plane. All right, that's what we want. So our constraining is done. Now it's time to make our string or rope. All right, so to do that, we're going to go ahead and create a new part. And we'll call it string. Make sure it's in the right folder. And I'm going to go ahead and use this assembly plane to create the part on. Okay, in here now, I want to make this an adaptive part. So I need to go ahead and make some features. So I'm going to make a work axis in the part at the center here. So you can see how we've changed to an adaptive part. And then I want to make a offset plane right on the tip of here, and I'll set that to zero. Perfect. Then I'm going to create a sketch, and that sketch is going to be on the side plane here. And then I'm going to project the geometry of my two work features. So the axis and the plane, okay? I'm gonna throw a dimension across that. It's gonna give me a message and then it says it's a driven dimension and that's what I want. All right, perfect. We'll finish that sketch up. I'm gonna come up into my parameters and I'm gonna find that it is D0 for this measurement. I'm gonna to need to remember that. Okay, from here, we'll go ahead and create another sketch on this here. And we're going to project the geometry of this. Whoops, let's finish that and delete it. Let me do that one more time. Create sketch. There we go. Project the geometry of the plane again. Actually, I could do the circle. We'll just do both. It's fine. And there we go. Okay. I'm going to draw a line up off of here.
to here. I'm just going to create a small construction line off of our center out and just make sure that that's perpendicular. Okay. And then I'm going to create an arc. A little off, so let's get it centered. Okay, and a dimension on here 25. Okay, from there, I'll take a line down like so. Okay, I got a little problem right here. Uh, let's just throw a dimension from here to here. There we go. Something's a little off. What's the problem? The groove must be point four nine. see what the problem is. It's over here. Okay. There we go. All fixed up. Okay. So I just had some constraint issues up there. All right. So now here's where it really gets good. I'm going to place a dimension on this short line segment. And I have five units over on the other side. I'm going to say 8 minus E0. Okay, so that means if this number changes, this number is going to have to change to correlate with that number. I'll finish up my sketch. I'm going to start another sketch. And we'll put it down here. And we we'll draw a little circle. Put dimension on a point zero two. Finish that. And then we're going to sweep that along this sketch. Okay, let's change the material so that it stands out. And we can now take the visibility of all of this. Oh, I don't want to take this one, that one. Just these three. And turn it off. That work plane. Oh, it's this one here. Okay, there we go. All right, we should save it and return back to our assembly. And there's our model. All right, so now it's time to make this work. If you remember, we set a mate constraint between that plane and this plane with an offset distance of five. 
So we're going to find that. And we're going to drive that constraint. And we're at five. I'm going to bring it down to three. I'm going to put the two arrows and put drive adaptability on. Total number of steps. I'm going to make that about 100. Start and start. We'll do this three times. And we'll give it a try. And there it is. Our string is moving based on where the weight and the hook are at. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we were looking for. We are going to add one more thing onto this to make it a little better. And that's one more constraint. And this is going to be a motion constraint. So let's switch to motion. And rather than rotation, rotation, we're going to do rotation translation. I'm going to pick the center axis of our pulley and the top face of our weight. I'm going to set this to 2. And now we'll go ahead and drive it. And now we have movement in our model. It appears that the string is affecting the weight, but really all we're doing is changing the dimensions on these linear lines here. I hope you enjoyed this video and you give it a try. Again, please subscribe to the channel, and if you have some ideas for our next video, please feel free to share those in our comment section below. Have a great day, and good luck.